I want to quickly talk to you about IRS Form 941 line by line instructions. How to fill out and file Form 941 in simple steps. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of The Awesome Suit Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous if you're here to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or a tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> First, today I would just want to talk to you about Iris Form 941. What is it? You can see this on the screen right now. We we're showing you the form as well as the link, the permanent link to the Iris website where you can find the form and download it. So Iris Form 941 is a quarterly tax for, for form that businesses with employees must file to report income taxes, social security taxes, and Medicare taxes they have withheld from employee paychecks. And the form is also used to report the employer's quarterly portion of social security and Medicare taxes. And filing deadlines are the last day of January, April, July, and October. So as a, as a small business owner, you basically need to pay attention to this, right? Because we, you might be thinking that filing taxes and business accounting generally is not something you look forward to. Yes, that's true. But you have to actually comply. The IRS does not easily let businesses forget their tax filing responsibilities. Unlike individual taxpayers who only have to file one tax return per year, most businesses have to file quarterly tax returns. So on Form 941, Businesses have to report the income taxes and payroll taxes they have withheld from their employee uh, employees' wages. And and one thing I want to say here is that failure to file this form on time or under reporting your tax liability can result in penalties from the IRS. Okay, so you want to include this. Let me show you. Let me give you a few pieces of info you need to include on Form 941. Wages you have paid, tips your employees have reported to you federal income tax you have withheld from your employees, employer and employee shares of social security and Medicare taxes, additional Medicare tax withheld from employees, current quarters adjustment to social security and Medicare taxes for, fra for fractions of cents, sick pay, tips, and group term life insurance, qualified small business payroll tax credit for increasing research activities. So after accounting for all, the, all of these items, IRS Form 941 will tell you how much money you should have remitted or will need to remit to the government to cover your employment tax responsibilities for the quarter. And again, this is done on a quarterly basis, all right? And when we talk about federal income tax and FICA taxes, FICA taxes include Social Security and Medicare. So those are the two components of FICA. And basically, who has to file IRS Form 941? So most businesses with employees have to file the federal tax Form 941 each quarter to report and calculate employment taxes. And only the following types of businesses do not have to file Form 941. So you have, there are three types. Seasonal businesses don't have to file during quarters when they haven't hired anyone. Businesses that hire only farm workers and people who hire household employees, such as maids or nannies. So if you predict that you will you will pay $4,000 or less in wages in the coming calendar year, then you may be able to submit the annual Form 944 instead of the quarterly Form 941. We have actually, we have, we have covered the Form 944 also. And Form 944 is designed to let the smallest businesses report and pay withheld income and payroll taxes once per year instead of quarterly. However, you, have, you first have to contact the IRS and get permission to file Form 944 instead of Form 941. And what is the deadline? The deadline for filing Form 941. So first quarter has to be April 30th for the period covering January 1st to March 31st. Second quarter, July 31st for the period covering April 1st to June 30th. Third quarter, it's October. The deadline is October 31st for the period covering July 1st to September 30th. 
and the fourth quarter fourth quarter's deadline is uh, January 31st for the period covering October 1st to December 31st. If the due date falls on a weekend or holiday, then you have to file by the next business day. If you file by mail, please remember your return will be tracked according to the date of postage, so you get an additional. 10 business days to file if you have paid your employment tax deposit in full and on time for the entire quarters that's covered by the return. And uh, how do you submit IRS Form 941? Now, there is a federal e-file system, and this is the fastest way to file that form. So business taxpayers can access e-file through several um, several uh, tax software tools, such as TurboTax, h and Block, Tax Act, or any other tax preparation software. And your business accountant or, or tax professional should also have access to e-files. So you can actually sign up to electronically make employment tax deposits and income tax payments through the federal, the federal electronic, the electronic federal tax payment system, the EFTPS. Any tax payments related to uh, 941, the Form 941, can be made very easily through EFTPS. Okay. And one thing I want to say before moving on here is that if you choose to. You can also mail the Form 941 return to the address listed in the IRS Form 941 instructions. So it's important to know that the, the mailing address will depend on the state your business is located in, whether you are submitting payment with your return, and what quarter you are filing for. So you want to make sure that you have the correct address if you're mailing IRS Form 941. And uh, in addition, if you're mailing in your return, if you're mailing in your return with the payment, you want to be sure to include the payment voucher on the third page of Form 941. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you uh, very, very soon. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. So now let me just kind of give you a, a step-by-step -step guide on uh, filling out IRS Form 941. So this is a two-page form with a lot of info packed into it. So the form is broken essentially into five parts with an additional payment voucher at the end to be used if you are submitting your Form 941 by mail with payment. Okay, so step number one, you want to gather information needed to cover to complete this form. So, I mean, basic business info, such as business address and employer identification number, your EIN, number of employees, total wages you paid, this, you paid this quarter, if you have taxable Social Security and Medicare wages for the quarter, and total amount of federal income taxes, Social Security tax and Medicare tax withheld from employees' wages this quarter, and employment tax deposit that you have already made for the quarter. Okay, and if you use uh, payroll or accounting software, you should be able to use this platform to quickly retrieve the data you will need to complete the form. Additionally, uh, and I will just uh, explain this very quickly, the, most employers are required to make employment tax deposits on a monthly or semi-weekly basis. And although individual taxpayers pay taxes only once per year, the IRS prefers to receive tax receipts on an ongoing basis from businesses. And uh, Form 941 asks for the total amount of your deposits for the quarter. So you should be able to actually, to, you should be able to get this number by looking at your payment history in EFTPS or at your business bank account statements. I've already spoken about that. So step number one, gather information needed to complete Form 941. And step number two here is that you want to fill in the business info at the top of uh, the form. You can see on the, on the screen. Do you see it on the screen? So after you have gathered all, all of your necessary info, you are ready to start filling out this form. So the first section, first section you want to complete, as, as uh, seen on the photo right now on the screen, is located at the very top of the form. So this section asks about basic information about your business. You can see here your EIN. So you, you also so you put the name, you put the trade name, if any, you put the address. Right. And, and so in this section, you want to fill out essential information. All right. And if you look at the right, you have a report for this quarter of 2020. If you if you're doing for 2020, if it's 21, you put the you, you will have the right uh, info. So you put January, February, July or October. It really depends upon the quarter. So you just have to put a cross in the right in the right uh, box. Moving on, we have step three. So step three, you want to fill in part one of Form 941. So we have it here. So once you fill out your basic business information, 
what do you do here? You basically have to go nest. And so what, what you want to do here is this is again, very straightforward here. You can see on the screen. So you put number of employees, wages, federal income tax withheld for, from wages, tips and compensation. That's line three, line four. If no wages, tips or other compensation, then you just want to go straight to line six. All right. So line five, line five, we have taxable social security wages. So you can see here, you have uh, the qualified sick leave. If you can see on the screen right now, we have qualified family leave wages, taxable social security tips and line five D five. So it's pretty uh, self explanatory here. And if you, if you move on, you, so line six, line seven, the current quarters, uh, current quarters adjustment, line eight, sick pay adjustments, line nine group term life insurance, line 10, total taxes. So he, this is where here you have to actually add line six through nine. 11 a you have qualified small business payroll tax credits line 11 b you have non-refundable portion of credit for qualified sick and family leave leave wages if those items are applicable to you you enter them here line 11 c you have non-refundable portion of employee retention credit from uh, worksheet one and uh, we continue here we have 11 d total non-refundable credits uh, 12 you have total taxes after adjustments here you have to subtract line line 11 D from line 10. All right. And uh, 13 A, this is where you put the total deposits for the quarter, including overpayment applied from a prior quarter and overpayments applied from form 941 X, 941 X PR, 944 X or 944 X SP file in the current quarter. You can get all this info from your accounting software or the EFTPS or your bank account. Line 13 B, you have deferred amount of social security tax. Line 13C, if this is applicable to you, you have to put in there the refundable portion of credit for qualified sick and family leave wages. Line 13D, this is the refundable, the refundable portion of employee retention credit. Line 13E, this is where you have, you put all the total deposits, deferrals and refundable credits. This is where you have to add lines 13A, 13B, 13C and 13D. Line 13 F, you have uh, total you have total advances received from filing form 7200 this quarter. We actually also covered form 7200 on another show. You want you want to double check that. And uh, we have a total deposit 13 G. We have total deposit deferrals and refundable credits less advances. So this is where here you have to su subtract line 13 F from line 13 E. Line 14, you have balance due. So if line 12. You can see on the screen if line 12 is more than line 13 G, you want to enter the uh, difference and you need to see IRS instruction and line 15. The last but not the least, if line 13 G is more than line 12, you want to enter the difference. This is the, if you have an overpayment and you can apply, you can uh, check, you can opt for applying the, the overpayment to the next return or asking the IRS to send you a refund. Now, step four, step four. You want to fill in part two of the form 941. You can see on the screen right now we have it here. So basically what you have to do here is uh, you can see on the screen. So you need to check the 16 if it applies to you. And this is uh, where you have to tell us about your deposit schedule and tax liability for this quarter. And the 16 you say if you are a monthly scheduled depositor for the entire quarter or if you are a semi weekly scheduled depositor for any part of the quarter. And step five, you want to fill in parts three and four of the form. So Part three, we have it here. Line 17, you have to say whether a business, your business has closed or you stop paying wages. You need, to put in, you need to put in the date. 18, if you are a seasonal employer. 19, qualify health plan expenses. 20, qualify health plan expenses allocable to um, qualified family leave wages. 21, you have to put the qualified wages for the employee retention credit. On line 22, you have uh, qualified health plan expenses that are all allocable to uh, wages reported on line 21. Line 23 is kind of important. And I'm not going to go too much in details here, but this is a credit from form 5884C, line 11 for this quarter. Line 24, this is the deferred amount of the employee share of Social Security tax included on line 13B. And line 13B, if you remember, this is the deferred amount of social security tax, the total amount. And we continue here and the 20, 
25, line 25 is the reserve for, for future use. So there's nothing you have to put in there, right? It's just for the IRS. And uh, part four, you tell the IRS if you are okay that uh, they can speak with your third party designee. If this is yes, then you need to, you need to put uh, the uh, designee's name and phone number. And you need to put the, uh, the five digit personal identification number, the PIN, to use when talking to the IRS. And you can, you can say yes or no. Yeah, it really depends on you. And moving on, now we have part five. This is the step six. You need to, uh, this is where you have to sign. You have to put your name there, put the date. You need to print your name and you need to print your title. And you need to put uh, the best time to contact you uh, during the day and the best daytime phone. And if you use a preparer, a, preparer, a tax preparer, then uh, you got to ask the preparer to fill in the, the bottom of uh, part five. So the name, the signature, the address, the city, the PTIN, the professional tax identification number of the uh, of the um, preparer. All right. And uh, you need to submit uh, step seven. You need to submit form 941 to the IRS and pay any remaining balance. Very important. So you, if you're filing online, as, as I said before, you'll be able to submit through EFTPS and pay any balance you have through that system. Very simple. But if you are mailing in form 941 you will submit you submit this form to the proper address according to the irs form 941 instructions document and you need to include the payment voucher found on the, found here found on the third page now we're showing this to you right now this is the payment voucher it's, it's pretty straightforward so basically you put your ein the amount of your pain your business name your address the the ad the uh the city the zip code and you need to put the, the tax period. So one is your EIN, two is the amount you're paying, three is the tax period, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, or fourth quarter. And uh, number four, you put the address. And you can also, I will show you right now what the EFTPS looks like. This is a, a website run by the United States Department of the Treasury. And uh, so EFTPS, again, stands for Electronic Federal Tax Payment System. You can see this on the screen right now. We're showing this to you. And then you can... You can, uh, when you're on the, on the website, you can actually uh, make a payment or you can enroll. All right. So as I mentioned uh, throughout this show, you should be paying employment tax deposit either monthly or semi-weekly. These deposits are often confusing to small business owners because the IRS has different deadlines for paying tax deposit and, and filing Form 941. Like I really explained, Form 941 has quarterly deadlines. However, most businesses should not wait until filing IRS Form 941 to actually pay their employment taxes. The IRS has a pay-as-you-go system for paying employment taxes, so businesses generally fall into the monthly or semi-weekly employment tax deposit schedule, as uh, I have mentioned, depending on the size of the business's tax liability. And you can pay these deposits on the EFTPS that I'm showing you right now. And the only time when you can make a payment along with filing Form 941 is if your total tax for the current quarter is less than 2500 or if you are a monthly depositor who owes a small balance no more than $100 or 2% of the total tax due, whichever is greater. So ideally, if you've paid the complete amount for your employment taxes for the quarter, your balance due on line 14 of Form 941 will be zero. And that's what you want, really, right? Okay. And uh, what about, there are some related tax forms to IRS Form 941. So one of the reasons businesses, business taxes are so complex is that there is never just a single return to file. Now, having said that, and uh, as I've said throughout this show, you might have a need to complete other related forms. Here is what you need to keep in mind. So you have Form 941, Schedule B. Once again, you'll file Schedule B along with the Form 941 if you are a semi-weekly depositor. If you have more than $50,000 in tax liability for the quarter, you are a semi-weekly depositor. And Schedule B breaks down your tax liability for each day of the quarter. So I'm showing you right now how um, Schedule B looks like. So you have it here, 941. So you can see that you have to put your EIN, you put in your name, the calendar year. You have to put the, on top here, you can see on the screen, Report for this quarter, which quarter you're, you're reporting for, uh, for, and you can see here that you have month one, month two, and because this is a, this is actually a semi-weekly, you have to put the proper info and the tax liability for the month, 
for the month one and, and uh, month two. And uh, one thing I also want to say is you also have Form 941X, which is related to uh, Form 941. So if you make an error on a previously filed Form 941, you can use uh, IRS Form 941X to correct the mistake. So you'll need to be prepared to provide a written statement of how you discovered the error and calculated the corrections. So we're showing you right now on the screen here how 941X looks like, along with uh, the permanent link to the IRS website. You also have Form 944. This is important to say. So as I mentioned earlier, small businesses that pay $4,000 or less in wages in a calendar year may be able to file IRS Form 944 annually instead of filing the quarterly Form 941. However, you'll need to apply and receive approval from the IRS to do so. So we're showing you Form 944 right now on the screen here. All right, you can see it. So you have, it's kind of similar. So you have, you put, you put your, your, your name, the, uh, the, your EIN, the name of the business, the address, and, so, and the part one, you have to put the, the wages, chips. It's pretty similar to 941. It's just that the filing schedule is uh, longer. It, this is more, it's, it's annual, right? So, and you also have Form 940. So in addition to income tax withholding and social security and Medicare tax, employers also need to file and pay federal unemployment taxes. And this get reported on IRS form 940. And we're showing this to you right now on the screen. We have an entire show focused on uh, form 940. So you might want to double check that, that uh, show instead, if you need more info, right? So basically folks, it's, it's important to understand that 941 form 941 is an it's it's a critical uh, actually it's a critical form and you shouldn't take it lightly and it's also important to know that some states have analogs to form 941 that you have to file to report income withholdings and employer taxes at the state level all right so what's the bottom line here at the end of the day IRS form 941 is an essential tax form for small businesses with employees so if you're in that category, you really want to pay attention. So if you have employees, you, you are already withholding income tax, social security tax, and Medicare tax. And Form 941 is what the IRS uses to keep track of those deductions and to calculate your employment tax liability. Consequently, it's not only important for you to complete Form 941 accurately, accurately and quarterly, but it's also critical that you file this form for, for the IRS on time. As uh, with um, any business tax form, failure to submit your Form 941 correctly by the quarterly due date may lead to penalties from the IRS, and those penalties may, may, may be hefty, and you don't want that, okay? So, having said that, there are a few ways you can make this process easier for your business. There are a few things you can do. First, use an accounting or payroll software to organize your, your uh, information. Very important. With one of those types of a software, you'll be able to track the wages you pay your employees and the taxes you deduct from, the, from, from their paychecks, which will make it much easier, believe me, much, much easier to gather those numbers when it's time to file IRS Form 941. Additionally, many accounting and payroll software systems include tax capabilities and some even allow you to file your taxes electronically through their platform. And uh, the third thing you need to think about is that whether you wholly outsource your business tax processes or simply get professional assistance with the forms you have completed, it's always worth working or working with a CPA, an EA, an enrolled agent, or other business tax advisor. Very important. And, and he or she can even be a fiscal attorney because these professionals will be able to answer any questions you have with regard to Form 941 or any of your tax forms, as well as help you ensure that you are completing each return accurately and completely all right so this is you have to you have to look at this as an as an investment because by investing in accounting or payroll software as well as the help of a tax professional you'll be putting your business in the best situation possible when it comes to handling your taxes all right folks this is the end of today's conversation i really want to thank you for your attention i was talking to you today about the iris form 941 i was giving you line by line instructions I, so I spoke to you about what is IRS Form 941, who has uh, to file IRS Form 941, what is the deadline for filing it, how do you submit it, and I gave you a step-by-step -step instructions, and uh, the bottom line in terms of uh, the whole 941 uh, form, all the compliance requirements, 
yeah, you have everything. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. And until then, remember, stay marvelous. Thank you.